Well, I'll just clean up my workspace, clean up my room. Um, trying to get some extra Game Boys and stuff off my desk. And I found this super weird Game Boy that I've had for quite a while now. I don't know. Must be like a knockoff or something because it says SNK on here instead of Nintendo. Like, I don't know. Was that like they don't know how to spell Nintendo? Knockoff. And I mean, look at this garbage. You can't even fit like a regular Game Boy cartridge in there. I mean, who do they think they're kidding? Nothing. You can't. Like, it's not even sized right. I don't know what the hell. Like, what a cheap knockoff, right? Uh, anyway, I did try. There are batteries in it. There we go. For those who are unaware, this is a Neo Geo Pocket Color, specifically the color version. Uh, this is basically one of the Game Boy's competitors back in. I don't know when the hell this thing came out. Like,. 19, late 1990s, I think. I don't know. Either way, it's super cool. It's basically a Game Boy Color, uh, except, you know, you still have your A and B buttons, except they're in the opposite order. Instead of start and select, you just have that one option button. And instead of a D-pad, you have this uh, eight-way clicky stick. And yes, it is very clicky. Um, but this thing is pretty cool. Of course, it does have the same limitations of a Game Boy Color in that it didn't have a backlit screen in it. I attempted to front light this one. It came out alright. I mean, I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to say I did a good job, but I don't, I mean, it's certainly usable, at the very least. Uh, but anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I recently got this in the mail and this is of course I've already opened it and I've already played with it and I'll discuss that more in a moment but this is a backlight kit for the Neo Geo Pocket Color and if you're looking at this going hey that looks familiar that looks like the Game Boy Color kit well uh, that's because it is uh, this exact same kit works with either the Game Boy Color or the Neo Geo Pocket Color the only thing is you have to order it with a different ribbon uh, if you have both ribbons, you can literally just swap it back and forth between the two consoles. It's pretty cool. But I'm going to go ahead and get that installed in this thing here. Now, I'm going to have to do a few things that you wouldn't normally have to do when uh, installing this kit. But that's because, like I said, my console is already modded. Uh, so I'm going to have to undo some of those mods or try and work around them. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. And this kit, while it does not require soldering to install, you do still need a soldering iron to take apart a Neo Geo Pocket Color. Um, unless there's a, unless there's something I don't know. Speaking of, let me get that warmed up. Uh, you, you it, it's just how it's assembled. You'll see in a second here. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Phillips screws on the back of it. And you're probably thinking, oh, gee, SNK, thank you for using regular screws and not being Nintendo and using a tri-wing. Well, hang on. <laughs> Gets better because there's one tri-wing in the back of this stupid thing on this side. So you do still need that special screwdriver. They just didn't want to pony up for all custom hardware. I'm going to dump those screws out so I don't lose them. I'm going to go ahead and lose them anyway. But that's okay. So what did I say? Five? I think that's that. Okay. Now, once you've got the back off, there are a couple things. See, here's the speaker. You just desolder that and then you can flip the motherboard over. But before we get that far, I need to remove this clicky stick. The easiest way I've found to do it is to take like a plastic spudger or something, jam it in one side, and use your uh, thumb to you know make sure the stick doesn't get all conked over. And just kind of pry it up, and it'll come up. All right, now is the time for the soldering iron. I need to undo the power connectors for my front light, and undo the speaker wires here. Now, on a normal Neo Geo, of course, you won't have the front light connectors, but 
you will still need to desolder that because the speaker is glued into the casing. So I'm just going to get some tweezers. I believe you can work around it by uh, well, just trying to be very careful and flexing things a certain way. I'm going to clean up these solder joints because they're nice and crusty. I was particularly oh, I forgot about these. I was particularly proud of this front light kit when I did it because it was something that I hadn't seen anyone do before at the time. And on one hand, I kind of wish I made a video, but on the other hand, I'm glad I didn't because it didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. Um, once you've got that desoldered, there is, I thought there were more than one screw. Mine apparently only has one screw. It, yeah, there should be one right there too. Apparently I'm a moron though. Forgot to put that in. Oh, gotta unscrew that fully. Okay, once you've got those two screws, you can flip your motherboard up. You gotta be careful because there's the ribbon for the screen. And the bale just slides out towards the bottom. You can pull the ribbon off and you can set this aside. We'll need that again in a second. Next, we have to prepare the front. To remove the screen, typically the easiest thing to do is just kind of twist the front half of the shell back and forth and uh, the adhesive will release and it'll pop up a corner and then you can pry it up from there. I'm not going to do that on mine because there's no adhesive holding the screen up. Uh, second reason, I have a uh, front light panel in here that's probably going to crack when I remove it. And third reason, yep, there it is. Nice big old crack. Wonderful. Guess I can't reuse that. I mean, I didn't think I was going to be able to, but it would have been nice. This front light panel was out of like a Palm Pilot. I put a lot of work into it. All for naught. By the way, if you ever do try and front light something with a salvaged kit, don't ever touch this like this. These panels have very fine texture to it and uh, your finger your skin oils will get in there and will absolutely ruin it and you j you, you can't clean these things it just doesn't work uh, either you ruin the front light or you just can't get in there to clean it okay once you've got that out there's still this sticky adhesive gasket you can leave that in there um, my lens apparently has some some dust behind it. Might as well clean it while I'm in here. This is a glass aftermarket lens. It's an OEM style one, but um, I'm looking to getting some custom ones made. You don't need this anymore, but you probably want to save it. Set that aside. Okay, next is the reason that I've been, uh, I've already opened up this kit. I spent a good few hours yesterday making this bezel bracket adapter thing here. This is designed to just drop in here. Ooh, and it fit way better than my other one. Oh, there it goes. That just drops in there. And then you flip it over, you could see it has the uh, black there. I, I just spray painted it, whatever. But I'm not gonna use the one that I just spent all day yesterday making because as soon as I finished making this, I saw a post from someone else. Uh, it helps if you let your paint dry, huh? Oops. Um, by someone else on the subreddit, the Neo Geo Pocket Color subreddit, that someone had already worked towards making a bracket. And of course, this is still my own design here, but I, uh, I looked at how they did it 
and decided that I liked their implementation a little bit better and it allowed me to do what I wanted to do without making the thing impossible to print nicely. Basically just print it in two pieces. This allows me to put the bezel right up against the lens. Should look a little bit better and it allows me to put the, uh, the screen half a millimeter deeper into the console. Which leads me to the next part. Go ahead and pop this out. And yours should come clean. Mine, of course, has fingerprints and dust all over it because I am a moron. But that'll just drop right in there. And you do have to fold the ribbon. And once that's in there, how's that look? Alright, so before I go through hooking this up, one thing I wanted to test out and completely forgot, I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. I had to undo the mod first though, so trust me, there was a, there was a reason. Alright, so with this thing, oh wait, I don't need the back case here. Move that. We'll use my power supply here because we want to see how much power this thing is going to suck. I've already got this thing set to 3 volts. I believe I test my other consoles on 3 volts. If I'm wrong, well, it's too late. This thing runs off of 3 volts. And I'll take the screen that I set aside. We'll do two tests here, one without a game, one with a game. And it's gonna, oops, helps me plug it into the right side, huh? Now the Neo Geo, unlike the Game Boy, does actually have like a built-in menu with a calendar and clock and stuff. It's pretty cool. It'll boot up without a game. Alright, so on the select language screen, because this will do either Japanese or English, it's pretty cool, it pulls a whopping 20 milliamps at 3 volts. Let's set it to English. Yes. Set the classic games to black and white, and we'll just say today is midnight, January 1st, 1999. I don't know why that's blinking. I think that means low power, which is a little bit odd, but whatever. Oh my god, it's even lower. Sub battery dead. Yeah, because it's not connected. So yeah, this thing has another battery. Uh, just a little watch cell that keeps the date and time and stuff. God, that is nuts. How low that is. I love it. So obviously the Neo Geo gets stupid great battery life. Come on. I know the battery's dead. Just turn off. All right, whatever. We will test it with, how about Pac-Man? No, probably gonna have to do that again now. Yep. Finished. Yes, yes, I know the battery is dead. Start the game anyway. There we go. I'm going to turn this light off. I can see better. So, yeah, and on the main menu, it's still pulling between what, like 15 and 22 milliamps? This thing is amazing on battery. Seriously, it, it lasts, I think, like 40 hours or something. It's nuts. Okay. Let's try it with the kit now. 
So, and again, I did say that the kit does not require soldering to install, uh, aside from the fact that you do have to try and work around the speaker here. But my kit actually arrived a little bit damaged, and so I will have to solder to install it. But, I mean, I suppose if you don't want brightness control, it's not that big a deal. So it comes with, of course, the LCD. It looks like this. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing it's some sort of adhesive for some, maybe it's like a dust removal sticker. There's the PCB itself. It came with this wire. Again, no idea what this wire is for. And it also came with the little touch sensor thingy that we saw in my Game Boy Color. This was soldered here, but that broke off in transit. So I'm just gonna re-solder it. It is super not a big deal. All this thing is, is a piece of copper tape soldered to a wire. It's not some fancy sensor. Well, I mean, I guess technically it is, but it doesn't require any particular care other than what you would normally do. Okay, so let's get that plugged in. I'll plug it into the screen first. goes like that, and I cannot remember how we want to hook this up, because this ribbon goes in here, contacts up by the way, or is it, do I have that backwards again, I can never remember, no, contacts down. Ah. <sighs> I swear I got it right my first time when I was testing. I'm just camera shy. There we go. Contact down. And that goes in there. And I believe the easiest way to get this positioned properly is to fold this ribbon. Get those buttons, I'll fix that in a bit. Ooh, before we go any further, I want to insulate the back of this screen. My Game Boy Color came pre-insulated, this one didn't. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe that was something the seller did for me. I'm going to use this wide capped on tape here. And forgive me, I'm getting ready to cut soon. I'm going to have to take a quick break. I'm just going to lay that down. Right there. And then it should all go together. Obviously, I still have to put those buttons back in, but I'm just making sure everything fits. Yep. Cool. So Both A and B are the same on uh, Neo Geo. You can swap them if you want, but since they're the same, can't really tell. Then we need option and power. And the one screw, because apparently I lost the other one. You 
got to decide where you want to put this touch sensor. I think probably right there would be best. But before I place that, let's test this thing out. I'm going to solder the speaker back on and turn my iron off. smush the wires until they fit. Let's try it out, huh? So at three volts, you can see it's already pulling 66 milliamps. Whereas before it was pulling, what, like 20? So that's like three times as much. On the main menu, I think it went as low as like 10-ish. Let me turn that light off, I'm sorry. What's up, battery dead? I'm aware. Okay. So on the main menu there, we got about 60. And forgive me, didn't realize it cut. They're always droning on and on. Uh, but in the game, it's about 66-ish. And of course, this is on max brightness. This does default to max brightness. This isn't very bright. Um, but I, I guess that's just part and parcel of the how this kit is. You can increase the brightness, so I've heard. If you take a look at my um, Game Boy Color video of this exact same mod, in the comments, there's someone who mentioned you can swap out a resistor. Uh, I'll have to review and see the exact specs, and and uh, well, maybe I'll try that mod out in the future. But there we go. I went ahead, I took a look at my other Neo Geo pocket, and that one had three screws for the motherboard. I guess there's one here, one up there, and then one on the left. Uh, so since this one had one, I just figured, hell, let's split the difference. And now they both have two. So... This touch sensor works the same as on the Game Boy Color there. At low brightness, we're at like about 58 milliamps, and then high brightness, 75. Ooh, wait. I think I might have accidentally hit that. This looks a little bit higher brightness. So we'll call that 73 milliamps in game. Yes, I know. And in the main menu yeah so you have your calendar time alarm or scope this thing's really dumb but kind of cool there you have it 64 is that max brightness let's double check yeah that was max brightness 64 all right let's finish putting this thing together by the way Actually, let me go on a quick tangent here. I didn't bother insulating behind the motherboard on the Neo Geo because stock, they have these uh, plastic insulators for the screen. Uh, it's actually super convenient. Uh, and you probably will have to trim these little foam pads. Maybe, maybe not. Mine are already trimmed. I completely forgot to mention these foam pads. Uh, but you definitely want to keep them, if possible, because it does help position the motherboard. Other than that, it should be good to go. So this sensor... Ah, oh, are you kidding me? Fire up the soldering iron. Didn't see what just happened. The stupid thing fell off. I'd like to make the point that that's not very typical. Just solder it back on. Speaking of. 
enough. Let's apply it. So there should be some paper to peel off back here. But I can't seem to get it. Oh, there we go. I can, I'm going to put it, come on, I'm going to try to put it right up here. Probably easier to do this before you put the motherboard in. In fact, it's almost definitely easier. But I'm entirely too stubborn to move the motherboard and fix that. Okay. Almost definitely should because this is a clear shell so it's going to show through. But too late. There's that. Just drop it back on. Pop our screws in. Oh, that's the one try wing, try point, whatever. The rest should be Phillips. Or I suppose JIS because this is a uh, Japanese console. If you guys are looking for cheap ish consoles, I picked mine up on uh, Yahoo Auctions, but if you're looking for a cheap console, the Neo Geo Pocket Color is not the way to go. These things are super pricey, and once you get the console, well, you probably want some games to go with it, don't you? There are not a lot of games, and what games there are, they are super stupid expensive. I don't know why I have two Phillips screwdrivers here. There we go. Batteries. Battery cover. And get a surprise. Oh, that's a problem. There it goes. That was bizarre. I'll set the time and stuff on this later. Oh yeah, you know what that is. Oh yeah. And yeah, the touch sensor works through. The plastic just fine. But yeah, there you go. I think this is pretty cool. Granted, it is going to uh, absolutely destroy battery life, but such is life. It beats having no light whatsoever. 
and this is significantly better than the uh, front light that I had. Uh, I will say the smaller screen is a little bit of a put off, but it's really not that bad. Uh, in fact, it's pretty much the same as uh, Game Boy Color. Well, I mean, it is the same, because it's the exact same LCD. Uh, but the reason I'm playing this game in particular is because I want to show that this screen has no, uh, no frame dropping. I mean, the game itself does. Oops. Maybe I gotta move that sensor. Yeah, the game itself does drop frames, but that's just Sonic Pocket, or whatever the hell it is, Pocket Sonic. But the screen itself, no dropped frames, no uh, no tearing that I can see. Just laggy old Sonic. I'll go ahead and post the uh, files, both of them. This one and the one that I'm using. I like this one better. I think it looks better with the screen. And, uh, because it puts the bezel right up against the lens instead of, uh, instead of offsetting it by, uh, one and a half millimeters. And, um, uh, but, I mean, you can decide which one you want to use, because this one you have to print two separate pieces for. Whereas this one, you just print one thing, drop it in, you're good to go. And it does work. I did try it out, just not in this video. Um, I don't know. If you guys have any questions, anything you want me to try out, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thank you for sticking with me while I installed a backlight kit in this super weird Game Boy.